Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would do a comprehensive video explaining why, in some detail, that people can understand of why the deadlift is so taxing on the body and why it is so difficult to recover from, which of course also is the reason it makes it such a fantastic exercise, why it can do so many things for you. But uh, a lot of people will try to compare the deadlift with the squat, and they don't always understand why the deadlift can take so much more out of the body than the squat does when they use really similar uh, muscle groups. They use similar amounts of muscle fiber. When you look at them, it just uh, face value and they work most of the same muscles in the body. They're very similar movements in regard to the primary movers and the stabilizers involved. Well the easiest analogy for this that makes the most sense is if you think of the body as a spring. All of the muscle fibers and everything in the body because of their ability to have elasticity, their ability to be compressed, uh, the ability of muscle fibers to store energy and then release like a spring. If you think of the body as like a compressed spring if you watch what happens on the squat, you watch on the eccentric portion of the lift, and for those who are newer to lifting, the eccentric portion is the lowering of the weight, the moving of the weight towards the ground, uh, allowing gravity to pull it down. You're compressed when you do a squat. And watch closely when I do a squat here in this coming video, and you'll understand what I mean. You have a weight on your back, and in this case, I've got uh, close to 500 pounds there. It's on top of my back on top of my shoulders and my body while I'm holding it upright, I'm holding it against gravity. As I start to lower it, you'll notice that I'm having to resist against it while it compresses my body down. That is energy. There is kinetic energy there. That energy is being stored. It's being preloaded because energy has to go somewhere. And in this case, it is compressing it into my muscle fibers of my quads, my glutes, my hamstrings, everything. So as it's being compressed like a big spring, that energy is being stored. And then when you pause at the bottom or you bounce out of the bottom, if you happen to use a stretch reflex, you explode back upward with pre-stored energy energy. This basically means the nervous system isn't having to work as hard as if it uh, didn't have that energy preloaded. For example, if you were to get underneath a squat and you were to try to crawl up under a squat down at the bottom with the same amount of weight that's like say close to your max that you could do if you allow it to lower and store that energy up and try to squat it from a dead stop at the bottom, you're going to find that even 90% of your one rep max, you can't even budget off the pins. Your nervous system will not let you recruit enough muscle fibers to break it off the pins usually. You're just going to get stuck at the bottom. And if the bars holding it up there, the pins were to disappear, you would find yourself uh, in a position just like a failed squat. So the storing of that energy is absolutely critical. Conversely, when you watch a deadlift, again, watch me deadlift here, you'll notice that you have to come up to the bar and I have to set up, psych myself up and pull the bar from a dead stop. There is no way to pre-store energy. Yes, I might do a hip drop trying to initiate some sort of movement or some sort of energy storage, but it is so trivial using my body weight compared to the weight that I'm lifting that I am forced to activate maximum numbers of muscle fibers to even get the weight moving. And if you fail to activate enough muscle fibers, enough motor units to get that weight moving quickly with any sort of appreciable speed, you fail. Usually you cannot lock it out at the top because you're pulling such a heavy weight from a dead stop with no way to store energy. It is insanely taxing on your nervous system, your peripheral nervous system, because it is an all or nothing endeavor. It is the single most difficult lift to get started in the initial first couple inches of this particular exercise. If you're working with any weight, probably anything over 70% of your max, you are simply having to recruit more muscle fibers in the first two to three inches of that exercise throughout your entire body. When you look at the sum total muscle fibers used through the whole body than most other exercises do on a set taken completely to failure simply because it's not just about the sheer amount of weight moved it's not about the number of 
muscles use to the body. It's about the fact that so many muscles in the body have to generate maximum upper threshold muscle fiber recruitment instantaneously. You're having to do them at the first several inches of the movement. So that one rep actually hits as many upper threshold fibers as, uh, again, a lot of exercises through the body, whether it's a leg press or a bench press or weighted chin-ups or lat pull-downs or anything else, even other big movements, you're having to recruit the upper threshold fibers on the very first rep to even get the weight started, not even to finish it, to, to lock it out, but just to get the weight moving in the first inch. And therefore, that means that this exercise has to hit the very same upper threshold muscle fibers through most of the muscles in the body, the ones that put the most fatigue on your body, attacks the peripheral nervous system the most, it has to activate those to even start moving the weight, to get the weight moving that first inch off of the very first rep. And for many other exercises to get those, what people think of as those deeper muscle fibers like that, they have to pretty much take a lot of exercises to failure or get really close to muscle failure to start really, really hammering those upper threshold fibers. And this isn't to say that an exercise like the squat doesn't hit a lot of those same upper threshold fibers early on because it does. When you watch the uh, mechanics of a squat, it is similar in that regard. However, it also allows you to store energy. It allows you to store energy on the way down. And what that does is that it allows you to, again, since you're storing energy, you're not having to turn the motor units on as fast you have energy stored in your body to kind of slingshot the weight out of the bottom through those muscle fibers and you're not having to activate the highest threshold fibers at the initial part of the lift to get the weight moving they start turning on further and further into the exercise and while that might seem like a really minor point a lot of people say well you're still hitting a lot of those same fibers even on that first rep by the time you're getting midway up yeah, that's true when you start getting real heavy, but you're not having to turn them on as quickly. And when it comes to things like recovery or it comes to things like, so like your peripheral nervous system, which again, the nervous system of the arms, legs, all of that, the stuff going outside away from the spinal cord, away from the brainstem, you're having to work that nervous system harder because you're turning the muscle fibers on 10 times faster. So it is that speed at which they have to be activated on the deadlift that makes it so difficult. It makes it so tough on the body. And that is why the deadlift is so difficult to recover from because it fatigues your nervous system so much in comparison because your nervous system has to work so much harder to activate those muscle fibers faster. Now, there's also a benefit to that. It's not just the fact that it taxes the body in the recovery aspect, but the fact that you have to activate those muscle fibers so fast also means that the deadlift is one of the premier power movements because what you have to remember for any endeavor you're going to do, whether it's a field sport or a martial arts or anything else, when you want to get faster, when you need more explosiveness, more speed, speed equals power. And you develop power and you develop speed by training your body to activate muscle fibers more quickly, which is one reason so much dead stop training, training with pauses and things is so tremendously useful for developing power, for developing speed, is because it requires you to activate muscle fibers and upper threshold muscle fibers instantaneously to get a weight moving from a dead stop. And that translates into power because quite frankly, if you can train your body to lift 500 pounds or 600 pounds from an absolute dead stop off the floor, you've also trained your body to generate explosive speed instantaneously at, at any point in the strength curve out on a playing field. If you need to sprint or run or hit someone or kick someone, you're going to find that you are simply able to turn those muscle fibers on more quickly as a result of that. So there is actually a real world training advantage of this too, because again, specific adaptation to impose demands. You've imposed the demand on your body repeatedly that it has to activate upper threshold muscle fibers from a dead stop on an exercise. Well, that translates into your body being better at doing that, which means you're going to be more explosive. You're going to be more powerful if you train that way. And again, you go to deliver a kick or you go to deliver, uh, you get to hit someone on a football field 
and you're having to grind and you shift angles, you can dig in deep and turn those fibers on instantaneously. Whereas in a lot of other exercises, they still develop power. They still develop speed. Don't get me wrong. You can get explosive doing them, but it's that dead stop training that really gives you the most power. But you need to remember when you're doing it on something like a deadlift, a little bit goes a long way. It is also very, very easy to bury yourself on the recovery side on exercises like that because you are taxing the body so much. So the thing that you need to remember, like with anything else, the amount that you tax your body has a positive adaptation in the sense of heavier taxing in a shorter period of time like that is going to cause better adaptations, faster adaptations, because your body has been pushed to uh, very extreme limits and deadlifts are greater doing that. So it's going to give you a greater training response and it's going to lead to more fatigue that simply requires more recovery. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.